Well, look at that. That was good. That was uncomfortable a little bit. What were they talking about, Rico? I don't know. I don't know. They were talking about something yesterday, and I was just like, man, Roberto's going to have a field day with this. Roberto's always listening, with the exception of, like, after six. You know, it's uh, it's Rico, it's Jeff Rieger, Mike back on Monday, Kenny, David, and, of course, Berto over there. I, I must say, though, every time you guys do who said it at 4 o'clock, we're going to do it today, it always agitates me because Wojo and I are – well, me, because Wojo doesn't show up to work – we're usually not eligible. Can, can we fix that? Would you mind? Or you just don't ever listen at six? I'm sorry. Who are you? Exactly. Oh, you're the guy that comes on at six. No, I listen after six. I love Mark Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we even had the thing. Can I get an amen? Yeah, he's in at six today, by the way. So maybe you can get him. Yes. Who said it at four o'clock? Rico, how you doing, buddy? We have a jam-packed show, or as Valente would say, a loaded baked potato. Although I don't think he said that in a while. We do. We do. We ha- we have a lot of things we want to talk about, and we argue what we're going to come out the gate with in the show meeting. Heck, uh, David and Kenny were so fired up. Ready it was to like, throw you down. know what? How about we just start off with Jazzy Cat and the Cone? It's unbelievable. They were ready to throw down. Our boss went up to one of them and said, like, we got we got boxing gloves if you guys want to duke it out. So, like, at no point did he say stop. He was feeding into it. No, but I enjoyed it. When the uh, roulette wheel stopped, it was about anonymous sources. Yeah, that's right. So uh, let's get right into it because this is all over the place. And I love it because it will cause an argument. But did you see what the anonymous executive from the NFL had to say about Brad Holmes? And I want to read this to you, Rico, because apparently it's going to get interesting. According to The Athletic, listen to this, quote, one exec thought the Lions trading a 2025 third round pick to the Jets for University of British Columbia tackle Giovanni Manu at number 126, and then using another fourth rounder for combination safety running back Sion Vike bordered on arrogance. He called Brad Holmes arrogance. This is an unnamed executive. Then apparently he goes on, he says, quote, they are really good, so they have earned that right, the executive shared. It's a little different from the arrogance coming out of Atlanta. Detroit has had a lot of success drafting offensive line. So at first he says Brad Holmes is arrogant, or at least bordering on arrogant. Then he kind of backtracked it a little bit. Then he said, quote, Detroit is taking a swing. You have to admire teams willing to do that. So there you go. Yeah, basically saying that, you know, you're never just one player away. And the fact that you took two corners, okay, you filled a need, but you sacrificed some some future picks. That was always the biggest thing for me in this in this past draft was you moved up to to you gave away next year's third and a third and fourth round pick for next year's draft. And when you're like, Well, why is that important? We're trying to win now. How do you think you got Terry on Arnold this year? You threw in a third round yeah. pick in order to move up. Third round picks are that's your draft capital. That's that's like cash. Okay. I'm gonna give you this and it allows me to do that. Or if you want to make a trade later on in the season, that third round selection or fourth round selection is probably what you're gonna use for your trade value. You don't have it. And I agree with you. I want to ask the people, first of all, do you have an issue with unnamed sources? That's number one, right? Because it's always the unnamed sources that say the juiciest stuff, and then you don't even know whether to believe them. Are they jealous? Hell, it could be the GMs for the Packers, that Guntenhurst dude. Guntenhurst? Well, see, yeah, because so, here's the thing. Do you put any validity, validity into the unnamed sources because you always do just exactly, exactly. what you're doing? Right. You find the one person who you feel has an axe to grind. And they're going to talk smack, and you're going to print it, and they can say whatever they want because literally nothing's going to come back to bite them. Can the unnamed person give you truth, or is it always an agenda-laced uh, you know, conversation? Two four eight five three nine nine seven nine seven. But the other question, if I can, this whole Brad Holmes arrogance thing, can we hit on that as well? Because I've heard this over and over and over. And this is just the latest time that I heard it. I got no issue with that move. In fact, I think it was a good move, to tell you the truth. Like, if this kid from British Columbia works out, 
and Holmes has been pretty good with his third round, fourth round picks, then you're talking about a right tackle or maybe right guard for the foreseeable future for a future third round pick. I'd say that's fine. Brother, I don't know. If, I don't think there's ever been a 6'8 guard in the league. Okay, but 11 dudes from the NFL went to his pro day. You know somebody was going to take him. That's why the Lions traded up to maybe beat out Philly or somebody else. And we really have no reason not to trust the guy that Holmes identifies. Yeah, but from everything that I read, it sounds like people are going to take him. This sounds like a, like a seventh round selection or maybe an undrafted free agent selection. Because at Brad Holmes' words, he's a project. Of course. You're looking at probably if if everything breaks correctly – a season away. Yeah, but hold on a sec, because project for sure. But you are at the point in your football team when you don't have a whole lot of positions available. You are at the point where you can take a chance on a so-called project because, you know, the offensive line is eventually going to be torn down. Taylor Decker might not be back. Frank Ragnall might retire. So I got no problem with him spending a third-round pick on a guy that he likes. He knew somebody else would take him. And if you develop him and Fraley, so the offensive the line coach. the second year in a row, you have a third-round selection that can't help you in the NFC Championship game. And you got to the NFC title game. And you so, and and perhaps had you had that third round selection who wasn't Hendon Hooker who was maybe a corner, then Vildor wouldn't have been in the back there I mean, trying to defend. Ifs and buts, I guess. No, but no, no. Like, you, Rieger, he could, Rieger, he if, could have used a third round pick at the trade deadline. He decided not to. Right. So what I'm saying is, yeah, it does come across as a little bit arrogant. But like I said, my question to people is because he's anonymous, do you put any Credence into what right. he's saying. Do you think Brad Holmes is arrogant? Because, yeah, that that pick was, I don't know if I would have did that with a fourth-round selection. You're close, but, like, that's something that if the Chiefs did, okay, you're back-to-back Super Bowl title. You could afford to do that. You got a guy that has taken the Detroit Lions of all teams, right? The Lions have been a laughing stock. Everybody gets fired or lionized. Nobody gets another job. It's been absolutely awful for the Lions. You get a guy that comes in here, and he, in three years, has built an NFC title team. Okay? Like, that in itself buys me, at least for me, leeway. The second thing is, give me the names that he missed on. Like, I don't think he's a doofus. Like, you say, well, you know what? Giovanni might have been taken in the seventh round. Obviously, Brad Holmes didn't think that, which would lead me to believe that other teams didn't think that either. He moved up to cut off somebody else because he wanted this kid bad. Now, I have no idea how football goes in British Columbia. You know, I know nothing about Canada except for I hate the Maple Leafs, but I got no issue with the pick at all. Two four eight five three nine nine seven nine seven. I wasn't a big fan of the pick. And do you have an issue with the anonymous sources? That's what I'm more concerned about. Do you care about what the anonymous people say? Because here's what happens. A lot of times you feel like the people have an agenda, but when you, when you're anonymous, you could actually say how you really feel without the backlash, because let's come out and say that it was, you know, the Cowboys GM. Well, not, Oh, well you're, you know, now all of a sudden you start picking that person apart rather than listening to what they say. I like when you hear the anonymous people because you know what? I can tell you the truth and not worry about my job, not worry about the blowback. Just here's what's going on. I also And I do think that it was a, just because you move up for somebody doesn't mean that somebody else wanted that person. You were maybe you were just impulsive and you thought somebody else wanted that person. Uh, see, I, I find that hard to believe. Listen, I can argue and we can all argue about what position you take or the player that you take and Rieger, why you I like or don't like I, him. I can't see there was a major like somebody wanted a guy who was two years away from playing in the fourth round and like everybody was going to go after this guy. With all that this guy Holmes has done for the Lions, you really think he's being impulsive and trading a future third round pick for a kid that in people's eyes isn't going to succeed or would have gone in the seventh round. See, I, I never argue about where a guy is going to go because Mel Kuyper didn't have this guy in his draft board. ESPN did have a draft profile for this guy, but we don't know. Rigor is level of competition. Wasn't that great. And that's coming okay. from John Jansen who played the position. Like he didn't go up against great talent. So when you're six, eight and you're that big, 
you look like the greatest thing ever in British Columbia. Two four eight five three nine nine seven nine seven. I love the argument. Number one, do you have an issue with anonymous sources? That's number one, right? Anonymous source, front office executive saying Brad Holmes is borderline arrogant. But the second thing is also interesting to me. This pick specifically, Rico dead set against it, it sounds like. I have zero problem with it. Now, maybe you're going to say, I'm just sticking up for Holmes because, what, I'm afraid of him keeping receipts? Now, and brother, the way- it came at a cost is what the pick. You had to trade up to yeah, get this guy if he works who's out. not going to play for a couple years. If he works out and the majority of his picks have worked okay. out. So if he doesn't work out, now you lost the you pick. You swung and miss. It happens. And that's a fourth round selection in today's NFL yeah. is either a starter or somebody in your two deep. You tell me what right now position need. Like, okay, let's say he... He took a guy in the fourth round. Or let's say he doesn't spend okay. the third round pick. I'm asking you, the team that, is so deep, you don't have a whole lot of needs. That's the most asinine thing to say. Well, you don't have any position. The team is so deep. You know what happens in the NFL? Yeah. Injuries, Rieger. Of so you know what? You get depth. And you know you what happens? You start backing up people. You don't sit there and say, well, we don't really need this, so we'll just start planning for way down the line and get an IRA Roth type of investment. Your no. most valuable thing in the NFL is to keep your quarterback protected and that's eventually going to break down. So when you decide to make a move for the future to help your offensive line, I got no issue because you got a team right now ready to go. But 2485399797 the ticket text. Rico's frustrated with me. He's very angry. You should see him. And we'll take your calls. People want to talk. Oh God, I understand. Wojo, I'm sorry. Well, what the, I, I, why? Because I, I disagree with no, you? No, I understand I disagree what it's like. with you. It's not a disagreeing. I just don't understand you. 